Okay, hi. Um, tonight I'd like to show you about a new feature I've um, added to JitWatch, which is a visualization of the code cache. The code cache is a region of memory in the virtual machine where uh, methods which have been compiled by the JIT compiler into native code are stored. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is open up the sandbox and um, here's an example, comes with JitWatch, it's uh, an example which highlights um, eliminated allocations through escape analysis. I'm just going to run this now. Uh, that will take a few seconds to run because it runs a, a quite a large number of loops and when it finishes it will open up the try view. Okay, right. what we can see here is uh, in the try view, this is um, source code that I just showed you in the sandbox. Uh, this is the, the corresponding byte code which is annotated. Uh, you can see these strike throughs um, indicate that um, escape analysis has managed to eliminate some allocations so we've uh, avoided allocating an, an interray there and uh, avoided allocating a, a jar view till random there. But uh, what I want to show you here is in this plane here, in the right-hand plane, you can actually see the assembly language. So this is the um, disassembled native code that you will find in the code cache. And uh, for this method here, inner, we can actually see that uh, there were two compilations, a, a level three compilation by the C1 client compiler. Level three means um, compiling with full profiling information and that was uh, followed by a C2 server compiler compilation um, level 4 and it was the level 4 which had the, the advanced optimizations such as the escape analysis. Now what I'm going to show you is I'm going to click on this new um, button here, N methods. Uh, an N method means native method. So this is a visualization of the code cache. Um, this isn't the, uh, the, the maximum size of the code cache allocated by the VM but this shows you the, the utilized um, region of the code cache. So we can see here 33 N methods were um, compiled. Uh, this is the address range and uh, about 102 kilobytes of native code was produced. Now uh, the green bars are bars that show the, the final compilation of a given method. The red bars show uh, the, not the last compilation. So these are compilations which have probably been replaced by a later um, JIT compilation. So these N methods are actually available for, for for deallocation, for removal from the code cache. Now if I click on one of these, uh, okay, this now tells me this corresponds to copy of range method on Java Util Arrays. There was only one compilation here, and it was a C1 level 3. It produced um, 2,872 bytes of native code. If I click on one of these, uh, these red bars, now what I can see here is this corresponds to the, the inner method. Uh, there were two compilations, so the, the thicker bar was the C1 compilation which generated 1944 bytes of native code. When I click on the, the second compilation, this was the C2 compilation which did exactly the same work for 472 bytes of native code. Um, and I can actually animate the code cache as it filled up. I can say over five seconds please uh, show me the, the animation and this shows that the code cache actually fills in more or less from left to right. I mean that's how the code cache works. Um, when a new method is JIT compiled, first of all it will check the free list to see if there are any um, blocks of uh, code which were previously allocated that can now be reused and if there are none it will start um, adding new uh, blocks to the end of the, the, the used code cache and inserting the native methods in there. Uh, I can also do things like I can turn off the C1 compilation so I can only show you the, the C2 server compiler um, native methods that are inserted or I can show you only the, the C1 and um, I can actually zoom in as well. That's more useful if you've got a, a large number of methods which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so what I'm going to um, show you now is, uh, here's what I prepared earlier, I'm going to open the log file from running, um, running Eclipse. Uh, so let's go back to um, my JitWatch folder. There we go, JitWatch Eclipse.log I'm going to crunch this log file now. This log file um, didn't have the, uh, the print assembly turned on, that would have made it um, even bigger. So now JitWatch is um, parsing that log file, looking through all of the log compilation tags and, uh, and working out what happened uh, during the execution of me running that, uh, that Eclipse um, IDE. Uh, obviously it's a, it's a large program, it's going to uh, have compiled um, a, a lot of methods. So I'm expecting to see a, a lot more code cache uh, usage this time round. Okay, it's finished the parsing, it's now just making some reports. Okay, that's that's done now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the, 
the Kokash uh, visualization, and you can see yes, it's, there's a lot more, um, a lot more end methods have been inserted. Actually, 15,605 native methods. This is the address range, and um, I can see here that about 47 megabytes of uh, of space in the Kokash has been used by those native methods, those JIT compiled methods, while Eclipse was running. I'm now going to actually uh, increase the animation time to 10 seconds. I'm going to show you. Um, how the code cache was filled. So it mostly fills from left to right, uh, that means there wasn't much in the free list so it was allocating new blocks at the end. But where you see where you see it filling in blocks um, that aren't at the end, that means uh, it found some free space uh, in the free list and it managed to insert a method uh, in there. So if I turn off the C2 methods you can see most of the compilations while I was running Eclipse, which is a, which is a desktop application, um, or compiled using the uh, the C1 client compiler. If I only want to see the C2, yes, yeah, a bit more sparse. Not so many methods were compiled with with C2, um, and it's a bit more interesting uh, if I wanted to to zoom in. You can see just how many methods are in the uh, are in the code cache, um, and uh, click on some of these. And each one I click on will basically highlight it. Most of these are probably uh, there have been one compilation or perhaps two compilations. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset that. I'm going to go back to the main IDE and I'm going to pick a uh, pick a, a method. I'm going to say something like um, Java. Uh, what should we pick? Um, Java util. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's have um, hash map. Okay, Java util hash map. Let's look at uh, get. Uh, let's just load in the the bytecode for that. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So this is. Um, Oh wow, there were there are actually eight compilations, eight uh, JIT compilations of uh, the get method on Java Util hash map. Um, I'm now going to close the try view, um, so we can see the compilations here: C1, C2, C1, C2, C1, C2, and C1, C2 again. So um, I guess that uh, this meant um, optimizations made by the uh, by the VM um, turned out uh, to perhaps uh, hit an uncommon trap. Uh, what I'll do is I'll show you now. This in the uh, in here, and you can see yes, so I've got um, eight little markers now, and I can cycle through them. So yeah, first we had a C1, then we had a C2, 728 bytes. C1 again, another C2, 696 bytes. So a, a different a different compilation. So hash map uh, dot get has been compiled um, in various different forms during the running of the program. Actually, this final C2 compilation um, was probably the biggest one of, of all of them. Um, Okay, and I'll just show you one more time uh, the code cache filling up. I think it's quite a nice animation to understand how the JIT compiler works and uh, what actually what it does, where it puts that uh, that native code once it's compiled your bytecode. Okay, so um, if you want to um, try this out for yourself, um, JITWatch is a free open source project available on GitHub under the Adopt Open JDK organization. And this is the new functionality, it's the, the end methods button on the main window. So um, yeah, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and um, and start the project on, on GitHub. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm Chris Who Codes. Thanks.